Here is a picture of the Java collections hierarchy of interfaces and classes. And what we're going to talk about today is a little bit of the difference between this hash set, which implements the regular set interface, set as a reminder, inherits from collections, which inherits from iterable. So that means you can iterate through a set. And we'll talk about how to do that today. And then the other one is the tree set. The tree set has another interface in between it and the set called the sorted set. So sorted set inherits from from regular set. And I'm going to go through the differences between these two and the, why this interface needs to be here. Yeah, I think this might be the only one. This is here because they wanted to have anyone that wants to add to this be restricted to making sure that the the output is always comes out in a sorted way. And that's what guarantees is this is like an enforcement mechanism for anyone that wants to another class. I'm not sure. I don't think I know of any other Java classes that also go along with this sort of set besides tree set. Uh, maybe there are some, I, I don't know. Uh, let's look at the difference between the two. So now I'm going to, okay, here you go. All right, so notice that I've added these items to the set. And notice that the minus six when it's printing has jumped all the way over here now, even though I added as the first item in the set. Yes, sir. Uh, let's keep going. So you can see that the order is not guaranteed. It's not in any kind of natural order. It's not in the order that I inserted the items. You can just think of it as a random order. Also, when you delete items, it's going to move the remaining items around. Mila? So um, now you notice also that um, I've used a hash set here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create another set underneath, and I'm going to call this set uh, a tree set. So I'm going to call it uh, set integer here also. And this time you can see that it's always going to print in a given order, the natural order. And here you can see that the natural order is preserved. So basically, when you have a regular hash set, the order is not guaranteed. But in a tree set, the order is guaranteed. It's always going to be in natural order. So now the next thing we want to look at is how do we iterate through a set? And we iterate through the hash set and the tree set the same way. I'll just show you with this tree set. Now, we can't do this. We can't go for int i equals 0, i is less than. Uh, tree set dot size, and in case I didn't mention it, this is how you calculate how many elements are in the in a set. And then if I go plus plus i, uh, you might be tempted to do something like this: go um, t set dot get sub i, like that. And you'll notice that it's already complaining. Can someone tell me why it's complaining? So in a set, you don't really have indexes. So even in an ordered, even in a, in a tree set, you don't really have indexes here. So you can't do this. So we need some other looping mechanism. What was the other looping mechanism you learned in CSA? Do you remember Mr. Basu? Who's for each loop? So I'm going to write a for each loop here. So I'm just going to go for integer uh, item in the tree set. And um, I'm going to say uh, print the item like that. And so now if I run this, and you can see here that it prints it in the same order that it printed it when I did the print uh, the two string. You can see it prints it in this regular order. If I do this for a hash set, Once again, the order will not be guaranteed. So let me show you that one. And you can see here that it prints it in whatever order is it stored internally, but it's not guaranteed. Yes, sir. So you can see that this is one useful way of iterating through a set. And what is going to be the big O of this? <clears throat> excuse me, of this for each loop. Who can tell me? Uh, let's see here. Mr. Alejandro, sir, what would you guess would be the big O of this for each loop? It's O of N. So each item access is fixed O of K, but we have to do it N times for each 
one for each element. So the, the for each loop is going to be O of n big O. So this is one way to iterate through a set. Now we're going to use an iterator to iterate through the set. What I'd like you to do is I'm going to just work with the hash set now just to keep it a little bit simpler. And uh, what I'd like you to do here is I'd like you to create an iterator and iterate through the hash, hash set. Mr. Nikita, can you help me with this, sir? I'd like to parse this set with an iterator. Uh, what do I do first? Iterator. And I'm going to say it's an iterator of uh, integers. IT. Yep. So I'm going to go set dot iterator like that. And then now what am I going to do, sir? Okay, so that would be and once again, I'm going to shorten this up a little bit to pick up less room. And let's print this out and see how it looks. You can go from set to set, from list to set, from set to list. I'm going to show you all those. Okay. All right. So here I am basically iterating through uh, using an iterator. So you can see that works just as well as the for each loop. <clears throat> that basically is my brief lesson on how to iterate through a set. Uh, as Mr. Afsari was just pointing out, that uh, I can create one set from another. And so here I've got this hash set here. And if I wanted to, uh, I guess I'll just go into this lesson right now. Uh, I can create a hash, uh, another kind of set, either another regular hash set or a tree set, using the other one as the uh, 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 initializer. So I can go like this. I can go uh, uh, set integer uh, tree set equals new uh, uh, tree set. And then I can put in here just the other one here like that. And now, so you can see now that the hash set and the tree set contain the same elements, but notice that the tree set maintains its natural order. Yes, sir. So here you notice that when I declared the sets, I used the generic set interface. So here I'm not going to get any issue because these things can only do set operations. If I had done if I had created an ordered set and then I tried to transfer that into a regular set, there might be some issues. But I don't have that here. And this is one of the reasons why I want to use the set interface here instead of hash set or tree set here. Uh, let's look at the other more common example where we're going to create a list and then we're going to convert that into a set. OK, so here is my list. And I'm going to convert this to a set. And in order to do that, I can just pass the constructor the list argument here. And now I can print the list and the set. And you can see they both contain the same elements, but the difference is that the duplicates have been removed. And I can also go the other way. I can create a list from a set. So you can see that I can create the list from the set. Notice that by creating a list, turning into a set, turning it back into a list, I'm able to get rid of the duplicates. I want to show you how to create another way to create a set from a list. Uh, so one way is we could do it with the constructor call. Another way we could do it is with the add all method. And we can pass it a list like that. And the reason why this is useful is that if you already have a set with some stuff in it and you want to add this list to it, you can do it later, not at time of construction. So, it, well, it's streaming. Streaming uses functional. So, it, yeah, it's streaming. We'll learn about streaming. In so you can see that the list and set are identical, except the duplicates have been reversed. Okay, so that is my little lesson for you on how to convert between sets and lists. And as I mentioned before, these conversions are all big O of N.